Linda Sarsour represents a new generation of Arab Americans dedicated to service. Her fierce Brooklyn spirit drives her leadership both locally and on the national stage. My name is Linda Sparsour. Um, I'm the director at the Arab American Association of New York. I am born and raised in Brooklyn. I'm a social worker, an activist, um, and a mom. Arab American, how may I help you? Alaikum salam. Ahla sahla. Okay, so in you just a couple of weeks, you want to get your children to the اوكي فيكي تيجي علينا يوم اثنين وانا ببعث معاكي واحدة بتشتغل معنا بالجمعية عاملة اجتماع My favorite thing about the work that I do is when a woman comes to our organization in a domestic violence situation and we help her make her safe and we help her access public benefits and we make her feel like she has more opportunities and get her into a job training program and she comes back to us two years later and she's a donor or when a Yemeni woman who had no formal education in her home country comes to our program, learns English, and comes back with her citizenship certificate and a big plate of sabaya, which is a very special Yemeni sweet that they make. And that just brings like joy to my heart. How many people wish that we lived in a world where it was okay to be who we are? And everyone on TV thought we were the coolest thing. How many people wish we lived in a world like that? <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't live in a world like that. And that brings me to why you guys are here today. In order for us not to live in a world like that, we need every single one of you, see I'm looking at all of you, to be a part of this. And the reason why the Jamaica is here, the reason why you guys are here is because we need young people. I mean, what started me off 10 years ago was a family relative who had just opened the Arab American Association of New York, which was supposed to be a kind of social service agency helping people out. And obviously the, the idea behind the Arab American Association came before 9-11. When 9-11 happened, it was like the whole course of what that organization was going to be changed. I saw grown men from New York um, who were going to register under a program called NSEERS, where they asked for all males over the age of 16 to register with immigration. And I remember, you know, interpreting for people at the windows. And then I started noticing that there were some that were going to the 10th floor. So I went up to an officer. I said, where are these men going? And they said, they're going to the FBI. And I started taking down people's names um, and taking down phone numbers of their loved ones because I didn't know if they were coming back. I mean, working on these cases for the past 10 years in my organization, it's kind of a lot to go home with at night. Like you think about these families um, and then thinking about women whose husbands are in detention centers that are disgusting and unsanitary, going there and not finding their husband there, they were moved to another facility. I mean, it's just, it's just a lot to hold. Emotionally burdens you kind of to feel like your people are doing uh, are going through this and there's really not much that you can do but to make sure that their stories are being told. We're in a country where our Congress doesn't represent the people. I don't see people that look like me or have the same priorities that communities of color have. And I think that it's about time that our community who's been in this country for over 100 years has an Arab American Muslim Congresswoman. So I'm hoping to start small, start in the city council um, and work my way up. Brooklyn is such a wonderful place and, not, and people always say Brooklyn has someone from everywhere, but it also has Arabs from everywhere. And we're all one community. I don't see divisions like, oh, you're Syrian and this one's Egyptian. It's just such a beautiful place to live. My parents moved here to Sunset Park, Brooklyn in the late 70s. My family is originally from the West Bank, from a town called El Bire. I have six siblings. I'm the oldest child. Growing up in a very traditional Palestinian family, and my parents thought it was the right thing to do that when I was 17 years old and graduating high school a year early, that I was ready for marriage. In our community, you don't say really no to your parents because your parents love you and I'm sure they want the best for you. So I got married at the age of 17. I had three children by the time I was 24 years old. I would never do an arranged marriage for my children. They marry who they love. I'm teaching them all the values that they need to have. Um, I obviously would love for my children to marry, you know, Arabs and Muslims, but they are free to do what they want. <laughs>
I think it's important that we keep an open mind. Um, and that we invite people who aren't just Arabs, like other people of different ethnicities. And that we continue to push ourselves to establish connections with people that may not be the same as us, who may not believe in the same things as us. So I'm 31 years old, and in the Arab American community, the next activist is about 57. So there's a 25-year gap between activists now and those elders. And we thought it was important to start a program where we train kids to be community organizers. We train them to identify their own issues, whether it's in their school, in their mosque, or in their church, or wherever it is that they feel is their community. We teach the kids to be facilitators of their own groups, just to make sure that they feel empowered and feel like this is their own project and their own initiative. I want to thank every one of you guys for attending our event. Linda is an inspiration. She's there to motivate us all the time, and she's just always there by our side to help us. It's just been wonderful wonderful experience for me. They are young women and young men, fearless. Um, I think that that's such an inspiration to their families and to our community because we do have people in our community who are afraid and who don't want to speak up. We're just building a pipeline of, of future leaders. Now here's the second layout we have in mind. We must vote on one of the themes that the website provides. Our newspaper is called The Amplifier, which is possibly the first youth newspaper out in New York, so we're really excited and we're just getting a whole bunch of youth to write and it's just amazing because we're able to make an outreach as well as tell our stories and our perspective and our opinions are going to be heard. I'm excited about putting my point of view out there. It's, it's a means of, you know, connecting with the younger generation. A lot of times when you're young you think that you don't have a voice and Linda always says you are the future and she says it constantly. The youth have they have power. Whenever something important is happening, she doesn't go to the adults, she comes to the youth. I'm, I'm hoping that what I'm doing is creating a legacy and opening an opportunity for other young people to do the work that I'm doing right now. Yeah, where exactly. you can have this and then like this on the side of the video section. So like I mean, I always grew up with the energy that I have. Um, obviously now I'm focusing in, in a certain area, but my family gives me inspiration. I sometimes sit back and say, why am I doing this? What am I doing to myself? I could just go work in corporate America and have a nine to five job. But I think about what kind of world do I want to leave for my children. And I also feel like being Palestinian, I think that's a special energy that we have. It's about something that connects us to something much larger than we are. I feel like if you're not passionate about something, you don't have a drive for it. And I think the original passion that I had and the one that I continue to have is Palestine. And I think that's what drives me the most. I love